Good morning, good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm glad to be, you know, before you again today and just be able to bring uh, this devotion uh, to you. And I know from the depths of my heart, with every fiber of my being, that the Lord has really blessed you. That from the very first day we began, you've been learning something uh, that will enable you as a child of God to begin to mount up with wings like eagles. Yesterday I talked to us and I said very clearly that we must build our wings if we want to begin to soar. We must build our wings if we want to begin to go to higher heights. And so therefore, I want us to just delve a little bit into this, that apart from building our wings, we need to build our vision. We need to grow our vision. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 13 and verse number 12, the Bible says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. I think I need to read that again. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Mother Lord bless the reading of his word. Please understand, understand my brothers and sisters, that in your walk of faith, never allow your attitude to cause death to your vision because of your inability to transition from struggling to soaring. If you can be able to catch a vision for your life and make a shift with regard to your perspective concerning life, then I am convinced of success if you can be able to do so. Because you, you, you can live a longer life without the constant stress that goes with a hustler's mentality if you can be able to have a good vision and make it work. Please understand, child of God, that while it's important to have the mental picture of the future and the drive that a hustler has on the inside, the longing to be your own boss and run your own business or live a life is not enough. All you need to do as a child of God is to begin to have a vision that will work. As necessary and commendable as that kind of mentality may be, that's the hustler's mentality, you still need to make a shift in your mental faculties if you want to fly and soar to new heights. If that's not the case, you will keep circling and hovering within small familiar spaces. And therefore, if you want to sow, you must hone your hustle into the engine of an entrepreneur. Bring the small pieces, the small fragments of who you are, hone them, bring them together, and ultimately build the person you'd want to be. There is no better time than right now to rekindle the embers of that long abandoned vision and begin to birth new ones. You can make different choices than the ones that have gotten you to where you are right now. The moment you bath from the depths of your heart, you begin to bath something new. You begin to follow it and channel all your energy towards that which you sow and you begin to make it come alive again. You can take action and begin to cultivate new habits that will transform your vision into like no other. That uniquely reflects the variety of facets in your extraordinary personality. One that boldly dares to go where others have never gone before. One that dares to begin to soar higher. And you and I can be able to do so. And so it begs the question, how do I then build my vision? How do I then grow my vision? You must understand that your vision is passion documented and passion is a powerful motivator. The challenge is that a majority of us create goals for the future but don't really have a vision of what their lives will look like 
at that particular point. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Having goals is very important. But having a clear vision of how to reach those goals often determines a person's success or mere survival. Whether you have a general idea of what you want your vision to look like or to, you know, to become, to be, or you're still pondering over the possibilities, you must learn to grow your vision. Now, you not only grow your vision, my brothers and sisters, but again, you need to make your vision very clear. You need to make your vision vivid. Habakkuk chapter number two and verse number two, the Bible says, and the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. It's one thing to have a strong purpose-driven vision in your head. But it's another thing to clearly convey that particular vision to others, especially your family or your organization or your business or your partners so that it gets into their heart. If you don't make it clear, if you don't make it plain, then nobody will ever move further than where you have moved. A vivid vision is a detailed document describing what you see your life, your company, or your business looking like and doing in a specific time in the future. And that's very key. Your vision is not meant to be a document describing how you're going to realize your vision. It's about describing what you see for your life over the next few years that are coming. And you can make that particular document or that particular vision by engaging in interesting and captivating, uh, you know, things as you want so that your family can be able to remember and put them in their hearts. Your family vision documented can include lots and lots of fun, fun pictures, where you'd want to be, take some selfies, some photos in some unknown location and desire that one day you'll ever be there and, and you know, stick it on your wall and every single day when you walk into your room, you begin to say to yourself and your family, one of these fine days, we will be here. One of these fine days, we will own this house. So you take very nice pictures of those homes where, and you know, you actually make sure that you appear into that place. And that's why I tell a majority of people, the moment you want to do something in your life or you want to get into a particular place or you desire to own something, take a photo with it so that it resides in the inside of you and you begin to paint that picture for your family members on how you will look like in the future. Your main aim is not to be braggadocious about it, but your main aim is to build your vision up. And that is very critical. Now, once you've made your vision clear or vivid, anchor your clear vision with clear long-term goals and core values. So in addition to clarifying your vision, it's also important to establish specific goals and metrics that will help your family your organization or your business realize that particular vision as well as your core values. Your core values and your vision are very important. These two components will help bring your vivid vision to life, especially in terms of output and how your decisions are made along the way as you walk through the journey of life. Set the goals. But setting goals and creating a strategy to get there might be the most challenging step to take in your life while you're growing your vision. It's no secret that people often struggle to achieve their goals. They struggle a lot. But people and business that take a proactive approach 
to setting and following through with their goals are more likely to be successful anytime. Now, there's a guy by the name Dr. Gail Matthews. I was a, he was a professor at Dominican University of California. And this is what he said. He said that 70% of people who shared their goals and set up regular progress checks were successful compared to 35% who kept their goals private. If you want to build or grow your vision in your organization, in your own family, you cannot afford to put your vision as a secret. You must learn to share your goals with your team or your family because your family is your team. If you don't do that, you'll never be able to realize your full potential in whichever field you're operating in. You must learn to share it and this will help you grow your vision up as a child of God or even as someone who's been employed in a particular business industry. Once you've made your vision clear and you anchor it on values, then you regularly repeat your vision to your organization or your family every single time. And the corporate world and the marketers will tell you that there's an old marketing maxim that people must be exposed to something at least seven times before it sinks in. Con either, whether it's consciously or unconsciously. It has to be repeated on several occasions. The question is, how many times do you repeat your vision to your company? How many times do you repeat your vision to your own family? Remember the vision that you wrote in the beginning of the year, the mental picture that you have of where you want to be. How many times in this past one month, how many times have you repeated that particular vision to the persons that are concerned or involved or included in your vision? This same concept applies to your vision. It's not enough to just share it with your family or an organization once and then tuck it away, expecting them to remember it and work in accordance to it. No, in order for your vision to become ingrained in your organizational culture and performance, you must keep repeating it and reinforcing it steadily over time, even with your own family, until it gets in the inside of them, until they buy into it. If you don't repeat it, then they will never buy into it. If you don't repeat it, then they will never see how serious you are in terms of achieving that which you had said you want to achieve in your life. And for you to repeat that, you can be able to do it in very many ways. If it's in a company or an organization, you can be able to do that through your quarterly planning meetings and repeat the vision that before any meeting begins, you need to you know, repeat the vision of your organization. You can be able to have several reviews with your family or your organization with regard to your vision. You can begin to set goals again. Look at where your finances are and begin to look at where, your vision, where you are in terms of accomplishing your vision and see whether they are at par with the amount of money that you've saved up to that particular time. Can you be able to appropriate that vision with regard to what you have at your disposal? You need to repeat it and review whatever is going on. The point is to operationalize your vivid vision as opposed to just hanging it on a wall somewhere. Always lean on God for direction, my brothers and sisters, and, and, and lean on God for guidance. Lean on God on how to be able to build that vision up. And I'm telling you that because I know God himself is a good master planner. He says in Jeremiah 29 and verse number 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Build your vision up. So you not only build your feathers, you not only evolve in your instincts, but you also build your vision up if you want to begin to mount up 
with wings as eagles this year. May the Lord God bless you and may the Lord God keep you. And I pray that you'll be able to realize your vision this, this entire year to the glory and honor of his name. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that took the initiative to tune themselves to the different channels, Jehovah God, that we are casting uh, this particular telecast and broadcast. Lord, I pray that in the name of Jesus, may you continue to bless them and keep them. And may you open doors for them. And may you enable them to become the persons you want them to be. Lord, I pray that you'll enable them by your spirit and your grace to realize their vision as they continue to mount up with wings as eagles. Lord, I bless them today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You have the blessed of the Lord. Let me see you again tomorrow, same time and same place. Please, as usual, if you get blessed, share it with the rest of the people so that they can also be able to partake of the blessing that you and I are having today. You're the blessed of the Lord. See you tomorrow. God bless you.